everything together for us, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Now, I think most of you know me, and I think most I know most of you, so you've probably heard some of the things that I'm going to be talking about before, uh, that I have talked about before, so I ask you to bear with me, and that I may be redundant. I've been traveling around doing about three, roughly three times a week, I've been speaking to people in different counties across Pennsylvania. And in Florida, we're doing the same thing. I bought a place in Florida, and we are doing um, the same thing I'm about to speak about here. Yes. Florida has 67 counties like Pennsylvania, and it's an arduous process to get to all of these, but thank God I have other people that are helping me do it. Here in Pennsylvania, the three people who were also with me as a delegate to the Second Continental Congress in St. Charles, Illinois, are working with me as well to do this. They're, they're taking care of the east side of the state. But what I'm talking about, I'm talking about the Fifth Amendment right of the people's grand jury. It says very clearly in there, uh, under the Fifth Amendment, no person shall be held to answer for a capital or otherwise infamous crime except according to a presentment of the grand jury. That's the people's grand jury. The Fifth Amendment, uh, the, the Bill of Rights is about the people. It's not about government or the court or anything else. It's your protections. Those are protections for you to keep government from infringing on those things. Well, the Supreme Court, in, in the case of U.S. versus Williams, handed down a 6-3 decision, and Scalia delivered the opinion of the court. And he said that the common law grand jury is the people's fourth branch of government. It's there to prevent oppression and tyranny in the government. <clears throat> that being said, the Bar Association claims in 1946 that they abolished common law. Well, in order to abolish common law, you have to abolish God. God is the first rule of the common law. His word is the number one rule. Amen. So those of us who think that the Bar Association has this omnipotence might ought to get on their knees and ask for enlightenment. The Bar Association has taken control of this country. They're in control of all three branches of government. They're in control of all the local governments. Every public officer has a solicitor. And whenever you have a complaint or you address one of them, they will tell you, I need to speak to my solicitor, or they'll have their solicitor there. Well, that puts you at a disadvantage and they're using your money to pay that solicitor so that you are disadvantaged. They are supposed to be your representative, but what are they doing? They're doing anything they want and they're using the legal ease of a solicitor and what they are controlling to d despair and discourage you from pursuing your rights, your God-given rights. Your rights come from God. They don't come from government. Now, what we're doing is we're forming the common law grand juries in every county. I'm going to ask you tonight, I challenge you tonight, to put your name on this list for, and get and the information for the county that you live in. And we, I have appointed leaders in different counties in the interim to gather this information together and to call for meetings, and I will come to those meetings and show you how to use how to form and use the grand jury. You will at that meeting, we need 25 people in each county, a minimum of 25. I'm recommending 30, but I'm also recommending that we get as many as we can possibly do because we're gonna need more than one county, one uh, common law grand jury in each county. But we can begin with one, and the first public official that we put behind the, the Great Bar Hotel will send the message to all the rest of them to stop uh, interfering and depriving us of our rights. It will stop them from taxing you on your property. There's no law that authorizes the property taxes. It will stop them from putting you in a criminal court for a traffic citation. And if you can't pay it, they put you in jail, hold you in contempt, and put you in jail. These are all things created by the Bar Association. It is not law. It never was law. 
The statutes that the legislature creates are done unconstitutionally in violation of their oath of office. They swear that they will uphold, obey, and defend the Constitution of the United States and of this state, this commonwealth. But they don't. They promise that they will do it with fidelity. They do not. <coughs> so what we will be doing as the common law grand jurors, we will be bringing presentments against those people. The common law grand jury has tremendous judicial power. We can subpoena persons, papers, and records to appear before us. And we will do investigations on our own. And they have to fund it. The counties has to fund it. It works with the sheriff. Once we hand out a presentment, the sheriff has to take the presentment and make an arrest, whoever the presentment is against. He has to hand it to the district attorney for criminal prosecution. It's mandatory. He can't, he can't not do it because if he does, then we'll do a presentment against him and we'll remove him from office. We have that power. We'll take the sheriff out of office and put someone into that office that will do it until an election can be held. The people have tremendous power that they don't know about. If you take a Pennsylvania Constitution, Gary probably has one here somewhere. <laughs> Article 1, Section 2, I hope he's got a lot of them. It says, all power is inherent in the people, and all free governments are founded on their authority. For the advancement of these ends, they have at all times an inalienable and indefeasible right to reform, alter, abolish their government, and to lay new, uh, establish new government, laying the foundation on principles most likely to achieve these ends. If you don't believe what I'm saying, read it in there. It's word for word. I'm telling you exactly what it says in that Constitution. The oath says at Article 6, Section 3, I do solemnly swear that I will support, obey, and defend the Constitution of the United States and of this Commonwealth, and I will expedite the duties of my office with fidelity. I've been doing work for a long time, helping people, teaching the Constitution, doing a lot of things. There is nothing more powerful than what I'm doing right now. I'm putting the power in your hands. It's up to you. If you believe in freedom and you want to save this nation, and you want to save freedom for yourself and your posterity, which it tells you in the preamble. It says we the people have this duty. It's not the government. It's not somebody else. It's you. You must set your hand to this thing, and you must take that initiative and dedicate the time necessary, and it is a sacrifice. I warn you it is. But I will never surrender my freedom or yours. I will fight for that freedom of all as long as God gives me breath. It is a sin, in my opinion, and I believe I'm correct, not to do so because the Constitution is based on biblical principle. It is enshrined in the 5,000 year leap. If you've read that book, you know what I'm talking about. The 28 principles are there. It acknowledges God. Our Constitution acknowledges God through the Declaration of Independence. It doesn't acknowledge Allah. It doesn't acknowledge someone else. It acknowledges God, our Creator. And we owe that duty, not only to ourselves, but to each other, our friends and our children, and our entire families. Because if we let freedom slip away in this country, and it is, the Communist Manifesto is already fulfilled, then we have done a disservice to everyone in this nation. We don't even deserve this nation. God blessed us with freedom. Let's stand up and take it back. I'm going to ask you, I'm asking you, I'm begging you, put your name on this list and, and dedicate the time and tell others what you're hearing me say. Tell your family and your friends about it. Let's start talking it again. Let's do like the founding fathers did back in the colonial days when they declared the independence from Great Britain. They talked among themselves, among the families, and they had to form secret societies to do what they did. We, they gave us a peaceful means that we don't have to use violence. This is our peaceful means without violence. And it scares the, the public officers to death. They don't want to go to jail. They just want our money. They want us to be their slave. And today we are their slave. So I hope that you will hear the wisdom in what I'm saying, that you will you will take the initiative and do that, and, do, and above all, quit signing things with the government. Don't sign nothing with them. 
when they shove a document in front of you for a license or anything else, don't do it. Tell them no. You don't have to. It's government by consent. They need your consent and when you sign your name to it, you are consenting to what they're asking you to do. Freedom doesn't require you to have a license. Some of you have read the story, I'm sure, about Patrick Henry when he went to the, the uh, 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 Constitutional Convention. He rode his horse through a town in Virginia. They had a man tied to a whipping post and they were whipping him. They called it scourging. He asked why they had beat him so badly. His ribs were protruding out of the skin. He asked why they were whipping this man so badly. They said because he refuses to take a license to preach the gospel. And they beat him to death. They beat Jesus Christ to death too. Is that what we want? Is that what we're willing to accept? It's not you today, but it might be you tomorrow or the day after. Or it might be your children or somebody else. But it's coming. You're seeing it on these videos and so forth. They're telling you the problem. They're not giving you the solution. I'm giving you the solution. I'm telling you, you stand up and you do what you should be doing. And you don't have to use violence. You can use peaceful means and accomplish the end that you desire. Now, it won't be a situation where I don't like this guy, so I'm going to file a complaint against him. You have to have a legitimate complaint. And that's your duty as a grand juror to do that. So I'm asking you, I spoke yesterday in McKinn in Erie County. The people were overwhelming, overwhelmingly impressed because they hadn't heard what I was saying before. Most of them didn't know anything about the Constitution. I know the Constitution for the most part by heart. I know what the Founding Fathers did because I put 24 years into studying it. But I did this, this is my sacrifice for freedom. I could sit back and relax because I'm retired from going out and being a government slave. I could sit back and relax and just draw the government benefits, but I don't believe in them. I'm not sitting back and relaxing. I'm doing what is necessary to preserve freedom for all of us. If you take this stand, I will stand with you anytime, anywhere. I am not afraid of any government official, including the President of the United States. I have no fear of any anything or anybody. I only fear God. If I don't do my duty, I have a reason to fear Him. Because I'll pay for it in the end. And I hope you will put your name to this. There's a list here for Westmoreland County. Someone told me they're from Westmoreland. Uh, whatever county you're from, if I don't have a list for your county, I'll make one. Put your name on the paper and I will see to it that somebody is willing to gather and maybe it'll be you. Maybe you're willing to do that. To gather the names in your respective county to get this 25 member minimum number to get the grand jury started. Now, uh, two days ago I spoke to the county sheriff in Butler County where, where my place is. And he seemed very receptive because he knows I will do what I've set out to do. He also knows that I will bring a presentment against him if he doesn't do his job. These people, once they know that you will stand and not back down, they back down. <coughs> but he is your protector. The sheriff is your protector. He's not the statutory uh, thing that a lot of people believe. The governor removed the sheriff in, in Florida from office, which he had absolutely no authority to do. The sheriff don't know any better. There's some people going to this guy now to uh, tell him to get in touch with me because I'm going to help the guy. The governor had no business removing him from office. He did what his duty was. They had arrested somebody for having a concealed weapon without a permit. Now, there's nothing requires you to get that license from the government to keep and bear arms. Not in the U.S. Constitution or the state constitution. <laughs> but the governor thought that he could just go ahead and do it, and he's in trouble now. And he's probably going to wind up being removed from office himself. But this is the power that you hold in your hands. And you can bring these people to the court, before the court, in each county. You can control your county because all government is local. Control your local government and you control the rest of it. With that, I will ask you 
Once again, set your hand to this document. Let's put it together and gather together and elect a foreman of the, of the common law grand jury. And I will teach you. There is a website. I, I, I hope you'll write this website down and go begin to study. It's www.NewYorkCommitteeMen, M-E-N, CommitteeMen.org. Go on there, read, watch the videos, learn what it's about and the power that you hold in your hands. We're going to be putting up a website in Pennsylvania and Florida, as well as other states, within the coming week, this week. We will be fashioning things that they have on there that I know to be true, that will simply change in name of the state only. Everything else is correct. So we have to fashion it for Pennsylvania, fashion it for Florida, for Ohio, etc. And we'll be doing that. So I, I urge you to go on that website and, and do that. Uh, I also urge you to do something else. Your right of suffrage under Article 1, Section 5 of the Pennsylvania Constitution, your right to vote. I encourage you to go on there and realize that it's a right. Your right of suffrage is a right, not a privilege. You do not have to be registered to vote. You can vote without being registered. I'm living proof. I rescinded the voter registration because of the first question on it. It says, are you a citizen of the United States of America? If you answer no to this question, do not fill out this form. I am not a citizen of the United States of America. I am one of the people of Pennsylvania at this point. I'm one of the people, not a citizen. A citizen is a subject. And this is not a citizen's grand jury, it's a people's grand jury. And they cannot Amen. deny you your you right to suffer. Here, Matt. Thank you, Matt. You cannot, you cannot be denied your right of suffrage. You have the right to run for office and to vote. You can't be required to sign a document saying you're something that you're not because you just perjured yourself. And the box right before you sign your name says, this document may be used as an affidavit for any purpose. Who would be dumb enough to sign that? We're deceived into doing it. And we did it, and I'm one of them. But I rescinded it. And I, sent, I, I hand carried a document, an authentic document, that was notarized, made it an affidavit, rescinding my signature and demanding my right of suffrage as opposed to my privilege to vote. They brought their solicitor out, as I said before. The solicitor said, yeah, there's no problem with this. He can do that, and you have to let him vote. Now, you can't vote in the primaries because that's political. That's a party. But you can vote in November. And you can also get your name on the ballot to run for office yourself. But when you belong to a party, you see, they, they start weeding things out because they have control over it. But you as one of the people demanding your rights, they have no control over it. Get rid of the statutes. Quit paying attention to these statutes because they're not law. They are government by contract and when you sign your name, it's a contract that's called an adhesion contract. It means someone wrote it one-sided. They didn't write it in your interest, they wrote it in theirs. You had nothing to do with it, so why sign it? If you disagree with anything in it, you can strike line whatever you disagree with out but it's still a contract, no less. Why contract with these people? You do not have to. With that, I'm going to end. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. But again, I implore you, put your name on this list. And let's make this happen. Because we will save America. We will save our churches. We'll save our freedoms, our right to bear arms, as well as all of the others. You look at the Ninth Amendment, what the Ninth Amendment says. The enumeration of certain rights, that means fixed, shall not be construed to deny or disparage others retained by the people. Then it, the Supremacy Clause in Article 6, Clause 2 says, This Constitution and the laws which shall be made in the pursuance thereof, meaning they all have to be consistent therewith. And all treaties made or which shall be made under the authority of the United States. Each state got together and formed this Constitution by the authority of the people. By the authority of the United States shall be the supreme law of the land and judges in every state shall be bound there by anything in the Constitution to the contrary notwithstanding. 
Ladies and gentlemen, this is your document. It's your law to the 